Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. All my lessons on General Writing Task 1 are full of tips, but in this lesson I want to cover the topic that's probably the most important of all. It's assessment and marking criteria. In order to score highly in Task 1, you must understand what the examiner will be looking for when they assess your letter. In other words, it's essential that you understand the marking criteria. Unless you know what the examiner wants, you won't be able to give it to them. IELTS marking criteria can seem complicated at first sight and rather overwhelming. My aim is to simplify them for you. We're going to focus on bands 6 to 8, as these are the levels most students are hoping to achieve. As with all parts of the IELTS exam, General Writing Task 1 is marked according to four criteria. These are Task Achievement, which is the appropriate response to the task, Coherence and Cohesion, the ability to present a well-structured essay or letter, Lexical Resource, also known as Vocabulary, which is the ability to use a range of appropriate vocabulary and to use it correctly, and Grammatical Range and Accuracy which is the ability to use grammar correctly and to use a range of grammar forms. Each carries 25% of the marks. We'll now look at them in turn and I'll give you IELTS letter writing tips for each of them. First, task achievement. This is what you need to do to get each band level. Pause the video and read through the table. Don't worry if you don't fully understand everything. If you follow all my step-by-step -step lessons on how to write IELTS letters, you'll be able to meet all these criteria. The tips I'm about to give you will also help. Here are my top tips related to the detail in this table. I've also added a sample question to the slide to help illustrate some of the points. Here's the question. You've borrowed something from your friend and it got damaged. Write a letter to your friend. In the letter, apologise for the damage to the item, explain what happened and say how you're going to fix the issue. So tip one, you must write over 150 words. You won't score more than band five for task achievement if you don't write this amount of words as you won't have met the marking criteria. Tip two, Clearly state the reason for writing your letter. The first sentence of the question will tell you why you're writing the letter. In this case, it's to tell your friend that the item you borrowed got damaged. Tip 3. Use the correct tone, which will be formal or informal. So who are you writing to? If it's a friend or close relative, use an informal tone. For all other recipients, use a formal tone and never mix formal and informal language. The letter recipient in our sample question is a friend so we'd need to use an informal tone. Tip 4. Write about each of the three bullet points. You should write a paragraph for each bullet point and fully develop the ideas. Don't write about anything else. Next we'll look at cohesion and coherence. Cohesion and coherence assess your ability to present a well-structured essay. This is what you need to do to get each band level. Again, pause the video and read the table. Tip 1 for cohesion and coherence is to have a clear structure to your letter. Your ideas must progress logically from one to another. You can achieve this by using this easy to remember six part structure. Start with the greeting, which will be Dear, whoever you're writing to. In paragraph 1, state the purpose of the letter, that is, your reason for writing. In paragraph 2, write about the first bullet point. In paragraph 3, write about the second bullet point. And in paragraph 4, write about the third bullet point. Finally, sign off your letter. Tip 2 is to use paragraphs. Don't write the main part of your letter in one big block of text. Separate it out into paragraphs. If you follow the structure above, 
you'll have an ideal structure with plenty of paragraph separation. Tip 3. Use cohesive devices effectively, that is linking words. For example, these are all common ones. Next, because, also, so, first, then, if, when, therefore, however, alternatively, despite, although, for example, on the other hand. However, be careful not to overuse them as this will lose you marks. Tip 4. Use referencing. Referencing words such as he, she, it, they, and these refer back to something mentioned previously in the text. For example, carbon emissions are a growing worldwide concern. They are proven to be a major contributor to global warming. In this sentence, they has replaced carbon emissions. The third marking criteria is vocabulary, also known as a lexical resource. Pause the video and read the table to get an idea of what's required. Tip one for vocabulary is to put accuracy first. Whilst you must show that you can use a wide range of vocabulary to score highly, you do have to be able to spell it correctly. It's better to use fewer, simpler words correctly than attempt more complex or less familiar words and misspell them. You actually need a smaller range of vocabulary than you probably think you do. Tip two is use appropriate vocabulary. Use the right words to express what you want to say. This might sound obvious, but many students try to use elaborate, high-level words just to show that they know them. Very often such words are totally inappropriate and don't sound right. Keep it simple and correct. Your language should sound natural. Tip three is to use synonyms correctly. Synonyms, that is different words that mean the same thing, are essential for a high mark, but make sure that you know any you use 100%. Similar words do not always have the same meaning. The synonyms you choose must have exactly the same meaning as the words you're replacing. It's particularly important to use synonyms to replace words in the question. Repeating the same words that are used in the question many times over will lose you marks. And tip four is to take care with collocations. A collocation is a combination of two or more words that sound correct to a native speaker when used together. Collocations are an integral part of everyday English and the examiner will be looking out for them. However, you must take great care to use them correctly. The word combination often doesn't work if you try to replace the first word with a synonym. For example, we say heavy rain, but not weighty rain. We say fast food, but not quick food. And we say a keen interest, but not an eager interest. So only use collocations that you know 100%. Finally, we come to grammatical range and accuracy. For this, you'll be assessed on your ability to use a range of grammar tenses and structures correctly. Pause the video and read through the table. Here are my top tips for grammar. Tip one, put accuracy first. Never try to use complex grammatical structures or cram in every structure you know just to impress the examiner. Correct, appropriate grammar is what will score you marks. It's better to keep it simple and error free than to lose marks for your inaccuracy. Tip two, use clues in the question. The most essential thing is to use the correct verb tense in your letter. Identify the tenses used in the three bullet points as these will be the ones you need to use in the three corresponding paragraphs of the letter. Let me demonstrate. Here's our sample question again. Bullet point one uses the present tense, so you will use the present tense to make your apology. For example, I am really sorry. Bullet point two is about what happened in the past so you will use the past tense to explain what happened to the item you borrowed. 
For example, I was running for the bus and tripped and dropped your book in a puddle. Bullet point three is about what you will do in the future to solve the problem. For this, you will use the future tense. I will, of course, replace it as I know that you haven't read it yet. Tip three is to use the correct structures. There are seven different types of letters you could be asked to write in your test. A request, a letter of complaint, an apology, a letter of explanation, an application or resignation letter, an invitation or a letter to make an arrangement. Each requires slightly different grammar structures, so be sure that you know them. They should all be familiar to you if you've been studying English for a while, so it will just be a matter of selecting the right ones. As I've already said, everything included in this video is covered in more detail in other lessons, so I look forward to sharing the information with you soon. Goodbye for now.